Hey there, everyone. So back for part two of the Zombicide Black Plague uh, paintings by Sir Doc, if uh, that's a good title for this series, uh, showing you my painting examples of uh, when I first got started into miniature painting and Zombicide Black Plague being my very first game uh, that I ever had painted. And I don't know if I mentioned in the previous uh, video or not, but I really started off with one brush and a bunch of borrowed paints and then I, I did end up getting the Black Plague a zombie side paint set from Army Painter which expanded my world quite a bit with some washes and some silver colors and, and what have you but still pretty limited. Those are the only paints I had maybe about 15 total paints uh, for the first six months and so trying to make these guys all look unique uh, was challenging at best and just cumbersome and time consuming, especially when I didn't really know what the heck I was doing. Uh, I had watched some YouTube videos uh, prior and during uh, my learning sessions, but uh, we'll show you what they look like and then you'll see the progression in future videos how how the skill has gotten better. So definitely this is something that anybody can do at any level. You don't need a lot of money. Uh, you do need time. That's one thing uh, you're going to have to have. But anybody can learn to paint, and that's why I love this hobby. All right, so we're going to start off with the runners. Uh, so in the Zombie Side series, your runners, uh, these guys are pretty fast. They have multiple act activations per turn, and so they can cause they can cover a lot of ground and they can do a lot of damage um, for you. Uh, but you can see, as I was trying to go through, I was trying to make these, there's only two different sculpts of runners, and trying to make each one a bit unique with just the skin color, the color of cloth, and trying to imagine what they were in living life. Uh, so you see the purple guy, is he maybe a, a soldier, um, you know, a court gesture, jester, uh, something like that. These guys with just the loincloths are pretty much... Um, they were the cannon fodder of society. Um, not much clothing options for them, just the rags they wore. And of course, they're, they're quite, quite lean. Uh, makes sense that these guys would be super fast. Um, again, looking at different colors of uniforms, which would these guys have, have served. Um, you know, different lords, different knights, different uh, kingdoms, what have you. And this guy definitely a court jester here. So again, lo loads of fun painting these guys just to get them unique. But again, each one took me over an hour to do for every single mini. And uh, they seem so tiny, but yet very time consuming. And then we move over to the fatties. And so this guy right here... I, I think this is the one my my son painted, uh, so it was the first first mini he had ever done. Um, he was 19, so he wasn't quite a kid doing it, but he'd never painted anything before, and he basically wanted this guy to look like he was covered in just slime and goo, and I think he succeeded pretty well uh, with that. And one thing that I had tried to do as I had continued on with... Uh, uh, the different paints that I was using was trying to get the faces right. So when you're painting minis, these are going to be, you know, two to three feet away on a tabletop typically. So you're not going to get a chance to, to really see them up close unless you're just picking them up and studying them. But they're made to look really good on a table. And so when you're looking at it from that perspective, you want to paint so that the attention is drawn to the face because uh, that's where people are naturally going to look and so that's where I, I ended up once I got used to what I was doing trying to pay the most attention to how the face looked um, and that uh, you know brighter colors for these guys ended up uh, getting brighter the further up you went so it kind of just attracted your eye naturally up to the top and sorry about the autofocus coming in. It's trying to focus on the box in the background versus the... Well, I'm trying to get this focus, so, which is these, these fatties. Uh, 
All right, and there you go. These are the uh, Zombie Side Black Plague fatties. And then now in the lineup are all the, the different walkers. So there's four sculpts of walkers, two female, two male, uh, that came in the core set. And same thing, you know, trying to make each one a bit unique and figuring out what their role was in uh, living life. Did they work in the court? Were they merchants, um, entertainers, what have you? Were they princesses? Kind of just use your imagination on how you wanted to paint them, and this just kind of gives you an idea of, of some of the concepts that I ended up using. You also notice that the rim of each of these bases is colored green, and that was just for ease of use in the game, uh, because walkers have different characteristics than do the runners, which is different than the fatties. And so, um, you know, if I pull up a fatty up here real quick, you'll see my fatties had orange bases and my runners had red bases. And so it was very easy to see them on a board when you've got 20 or 30 zombies uh, sitting out there to know, okay, which ones are activating, which ones are moving, and uh, became very almost necessary in that regard. Even though the sculpts are vastly different, when there's so many of them, it's just tough to pick them apart. So now we get into the real bad guys. So uh, we have the uh, Abomination uh, and then the Necromancer who is responsible for bringing this whole plague on uh, to the world. And so we'll take a closer look at this uh, Abomination. So in the core game, this guy was the very first guy I painted because it was the very first video tutorial that I saw online. I believe it was uh, Sarastro had painted it. And so I tried to make this look kind of like, like he had done it. However, I didn't know that this was actually a shirt on him. And so I had like painted the colors all wrong and I had to go back and, and repaint because I didn't know how to strip paint off of it. Whoops. Um, this guy's highlighted to death because uh, I wasn't, again, quite sure how to make it work, how to, to do the general um, or the, the, the gradual contrast uh, coming up. So, you know, why better than just plain gray? Uh, this guy does not have a lot of, you know, overall definition to make him pop. Every, everything kind of blends together. So if I, and I do have another sculpt of this guy that's unpainted. And if I do that, I will uh, do it differently and maybe make his skin just a tad darker or either that or the shirt and some other pieces a, a, a bit darker for more contrast. And I'm guessing he's got wood shoved in his forearms from smashing doors. Uh, and then, of course, he has a... Um, what is that? That is a noose, a rope around his, his neck. So... Was he an executioner and then got his his uh, karma justice that somebody had hung him? Uh, I'm not sure. And then, you know, tried to paint like if he was being slashed around his back. I don't know if zombies bleed bright red blood. I think, according to The Walking Dead, they bleed pretty much black goo. Uh, so this guy... Uh, may not be realistic in zombie lore. And now, the Necromancer. And this was one of the last figures I painted because uh, I knew in the artwork he had that cool little like blood tattoo on his dome. And I wanted to make sure I had a brush that was fine enough to... a fine enough point that I could work with that. And he actually is one of my, my favorite paint jobs in the, the core set. I think I did pretty good on him. Again, the, the highlights on the black were awful as far as I'm concerned. Um, they do stand out. They don't look as bad when you're looking at them. You know, from a distance, he's looking at the table. It does, it does help those folds to pop out. But, I mean, you can see there's no graduation 
with uh, um, color schemes there. It's like there's black and then there's gray, and they're very, very different colors. Uh, but he was fun. He had lots of little trinkets and little gizmos, and I love that he had some chains around which showed up really good against his, his black cloak. Um, so that does it for the, the core zombie set. I did have, just for comparison, I have some unpainted zombies. And so you can see these are, these are what come in the box. So these are all unpainted. Uh, you know, I think uh, Simon could have done um, something fun by, by painting the different type, just using maybe a different color of plastic in each one to differentiate them on the board that would have been great and superb and then because um, not everybody is going to want to paint all these minis and so making them a unique color uh, just by using plain plastic would be great as they did the zombies in this game they're all gray the heroes are all kind of a tannish brown color so you know you can do it just uh, maybe something they can think about in the future is throw some different color schemes into these things when you have different attributes uh, to these guys. So that's all we have for this episode. Thanks guys for, for listening and, and playing along and we'll see you for the next one, which is going to be, uh, the Wolfsburg expansion. Talk to you soon.